Hello and welcome to the Trump Corps shop. My name is Chris Legault. I'm the owner of Trump Corps Mutes. I get asked the question all the time. What's the difference between your three straight mutes? The all aluminum mute, the copper bottom, and the brass bottom. What's the difference? Why do you sell three? Why do, you, why do I need three? Why do I only need one over the other? Um, and so I'm going to take a couple of minutes and try to describe to you the materials that are um, used and the result of those materials and the performance of the mute. So the tops of all these mutes and the bottom of this one, this is aluminum. Aluminum is a very lightweight material. It's used in the space industry and in the aircraft industry. It's, it's strength to weight ratio is, is very high. So, um, and the formability of aluminum is terrific. So you can really draw out, you can, you can pull that material a long way um, in its formability. Oh, and by the way, this is an alloy. An alloy is a blend of materials. It's not pure aluminum. Um, it's got some extra elements put in there, manganese, magnesium, silicone, things like that. And, and that, that affects its um, formability and its sound. So uh, when I was experimenting with these and designing these mutes, I exper experimented with many, many alloys, and this is the one we settled on. So copper, is a pure metal. This is pure copper. This is an element. It, you can find nuggets of copper out there in the world. Pure. This is a pure element. So uh, this is a very soft material because it doesn't have any alloying compounds or alloying elements in it to make it harder. This is a very soft material. Brass is mostly copper with some zinc. And that zinc is an alloying material or metal in this, and that makes brass very hard. It's a different property. So brass is hard in its natural state, and it can get harder as you work it. So what we're dealing with is a density and a hardness. Part of density is its weight. Copper is four times the weight of aluminum. So... The same size discs, the same thickness discs, this is four times the weight of this. There's four times the metal in this. So there could be potentially four times the sound in this. That being said, the copper I use is half the thickness of the aluminum I use. So really my copper is twice the weight of the aluminum. And when you pick up these two mutes, you can feel it. You can feel this one's got a little bit more weight to it than this one, than the aluminum one. So when I'm working the copper, I'm bending the shape over, making the bottom of the mute, and it stays soft. It's got some weight, but it's soft. When I'm making this brass mute, I'm, I'm bending it over, spinning it over, and it gets hard. So even though these are the same weight, the same density, the brass one is harder than the copper one. So there's even more ring, more sound, more metal in this tone. So when would I use these things? When, when, when should you use these one over the other? Uh, I'll just give you a couple of examples to, to show you um, uh, when you might use them. Aluminum is super lightweight. It's very efficient. It responds, it vibrates instantly. So um, if you're playing a very fast articulated passage, I'm gonna use Pines Aroma as an example or the Tomasi Trumpet Concerto, super fast up and down the horn, very efficient. Aluminum is very efficient in that nature. Brass is very hard and it's very dense. So you're gonna have to give it just a little bit more as a performer to get it moving. Once you get it moving, there's a lot of sound in there. There's a lot of sound potential in this hard material. Copper is right in the middle. Copper is in that Goldilocks zone. It's got the density, but it still has some of the softness and the quickness of the aluminum. So to me, this is your everyday mute. This is most of your stuff. If you're playing Einhelden Laban B flat trumpet part and you're cranking it out above the staff and you're playing Fortissimo and you're really wanting to get it out there, brass has got a lot of noise in it. 
All right. So those are the uh, straight beads. Oh, hey, I know. Well, why don't you make one all copper? Wouldn't that be neat? Well, you know, we've done that. I've made some pure copper mutes for straight mutes. Um, but this, because of the density, there's so much material in here. This is a fairly heavy mute. Um, to spin this shape, this funnel shape, all the way across, I have to use a little bit heavier gauge to get it to come this far, to draw it out. And there's just a lot of density in here, a lot of material. And so it's not very efficient. And, and one of our, one of Trump Corps' overriding principles is that our mutes are efficient. They have to work very fast. And this pure copper straight mute just doesn't do it for us. Brass is even worse. So we don't offer these for sale. Um, well, okay, well, well, what about the zingers? You got an aluminum zinger and you have a copper zinger. So why do you offer the two of those? Well, the performance of these two mutes by the player is different. You have different performing needs. Um, if you're in the back of the big band or in the back of the orchestra or in the back of the concert band and you got to get out in front of everybody with a harmon mute, the aluminum zinger sends it out there. It projects the sound out there. It's super efficient. It's super fast. It's super bright. This aluminum's very bright. The copper zinger, it's dense. Remember, this material is four times the weight, four times the thickness. So it's very dense. The sound is very dark. Um, and the use of this mute is not necessarily in the back of the, the band. The, the use of this mute is up front in a, in a, into a microphone or in a small group setting. Um, it's a dark mute. It's um, the articulation. You don't have to just send it out there. You know, th th this is in close proximity sound. So the, the copper works for the zinger. It doesn't work for the straight mute, for the performance needs of when you're going to use a straight mute. So those are some brief explanations of the materials and how those materials affect the performance of the mute. Um, I'm going to take another minute to talk about um, words that we use in describing mutes. And I try not to use descriptive words like dark and bright and uh, cool and... Um, those words are subjective. Everybody hears these things differently. Um, I might have slipped up and used some of those words earlier, but I try not to because it's subjective. One person plays this copper mute and says it's dark. A next person comes up, plays the exact same mute and says it's bright. Um, those words are, are, are weird and subjective. Uh, I like to use efficient. Efficient is a, is a, is a word that I found that um, best describes the different materials. Okay, efficiency. Efficiency of articulation, of the blow, of the feel, of the response. Um, so that's a word I like to use. Um, you know, you're going to hear what you're going to hear and feel what you're going to feel. Uh, but each material is unique, is different, and has its place in the repertoire. So uh, thanks for having a look and listen, and feel free to ask me, you know, questions in the comments. Um, I'm not an engineer. Uh, I'm a musician. I'm a former trumpet player, so I understand the needs of of the performer, and I've been making these things for a long time, so, so I understand some of these principles here. So feel free to ask me some questions and talk, have some discussions. Uh, you know, I like to talk about this kind of stuff. So uh, thank you for having a look, and I'll talk to you soon.